-hmm. Well, the first morning we went out, it was cold, of course. We were at the Clay Wildlife Management Area in Nicholas the, County. I actually have a lot of success if I can get the weather down about oh, 15 to 20 degrees, and, and, and I've even hunted below that. Coyotes have to, they have to eat, and the colder it is, the, the more they have to feed that metabolism. I've been a few times. I've only shot one actually coyote hunting. The rest of the time it's been deer hunting or turkey hunting that I've killed them. That is a coyote print it looks like. I'm going to say probably a male. Probably 38 pounds with a white streak on the back of his tail. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Williams, we're out here coyote hunting today. Now this is not for the faint of heart. First of all, you know, you can spend many days out there and not see a thing. You can have other days when you see five or six or you just don't know. You and, know? To, and today's been the day that uh, we haven't seen a thing. We haven't seen anything. Yeah. But, you know, it's always interesting. You're never bored in the outdoors because you're seeing all kinds of stuff running around and, and the anticipation is great. Today was a fun day getting out here. Not every time you go out it's going to be successful. If you got something every time, then it wouldn't be as fun and as much challenging. So. Being familiar with Fayette County, I know that there's not a lot of people that hunt them. There's one, there's one right now. See it going down the track? Yeah, sure enough. See it? That's shootable if you'll stop. These are not easy animals. They're so slick. They can smell, they can see, they can hear. They are the most wary animal, wily animal, you might say, in the wild. They are tough. Oh, today's the third day. Third time's, third charm. time's charm. Well, this, if, if we're listening to people, this should be the best location yet, so we'll see. Paul is a persistent, very dedicated hunter. He's one of these guys that doesn't mind getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning and spending as much time as he has to to get after these coyotes. Now, that's a big coyote. Yeah. Explain that. That's a big coyote. <laughs> Explain that. <laughs> Once there were several hunts in the can and uh, no coyote, the best thing I can do is leave Paul and Bama out there because it's less scent, less movement, and uh, we had other shows to shoot, so it was getting it was getting pretty frustrating. Like all the hunting I do, I think that the challenge is what makes it rewarding, and you you put in the time, you put in the effort, and then when the hunt comes to a success, it just seems to to mean more. With the luck we've had, I was I was thinking that coyotes were about to go extinct since we haven't seen any or had too much luck. But if you look here, this is frozen ground with fresh coyote tracks coming and going both ways. When this was wet, they've come through here. The rain quit yesterday, so it's, it's been within the last 24, 36 hours that they've been through here. And you can see by the footprint that there's some large, large dogs in this country. I believe there's a almost a, an instinctive trigger in the coyote that when it hears something in distress that it's going to come, it's going to check it out, it's going to see if it can take advantage of the situation. That is patterned primarily after a rabbit in distress. It's going to be probably a variety of small creatures they run into in the wild. Since we haven't had any luck in the morning, and I'm fearful that coyotes have gone extinct since we started hunting them, we're going to switch tactics and try a little bit in the in the evening. Looked over there, got a look at it, 
and it was heading away. It had already been in close enough to check out the setup and didn't like it. So I ended up taking a shot. It was about 80 yards. The only reason I didn't hit it was because I didn't hit it. And it took off at a trot. I was kind of surprised it didn't run full speed and it ran back into some brush and cover. Well, this is the last morning uh, for us to get out and try this. And the coyotes have been hard to find. But we're trying a new piece of ground, which is, uh, it looks like a premier area. It's going to be a lot of open ground with thick rough cover in the hollows. And according to the farmer, there's been a lot of them seen out here. The predator call, the automatic one I have that, that, that runs on battery, it has a yelping series, which I've heard a lot locally. It has a challenge howl. In the breeding season, they get kind of territorial when they've got an area that they're, they're, they're breeding in. And the reason I use that primarily is because it does sounds that I can't mimic. We went out this morning and spent a lot of time sitting in the cold and the rain and the blow and it didn't do any good. So we came back to a place we've hunted before for an evening hunt. It is about, oh, it's 5.20 right now. We had not been out of the truck, as a matter of fact. Scott here was getting the camera equipment together and I was setting up the decoy when I glanced across the field and I got a little movement back in the little wooded section we're calling into and I, it was a coyote. So I got Scott, we came over here and laid across his hay bale. And then with a, a little coax calling, it came in. You'll be able to see on the video what it's trying to do after it breaks the cover is it's trying to trot up and get downwind of us. It knows where that calling was coming from and it's trying to get just a little bit downwind and uh, it got just a little too close. That was about 80 yards. The first shot since it was moving was just a little far back and we had to do a second one to, to seal the deal. This one isn't particularly large. It's about a, I'm gonna guess probably a 30 pound coyote. The tracks we've been seeing in here show that there's at least one or two considerably bigger than this one. You'll always notice them, they'll have a, a nice bushy tail on them. That's gonna differentiate them between most of your dogs and that's gonna be easy to see. This one is not particularly large. It's about a, that's just probably a little under a 30 pound dog and I've seen them as big as 53 is the biggest I've ever taken. That first shot was a little far back I hit it here and I meant to hit it here, but that movement uh, tossed me off. And now what a lot of people don't realize is how, how vicious these little fellas can be. They have got a tremendous set of canines. And those canines are considerably larger than a dog of that convertible size. We've tried different decoys. We've tried different property. Uh, we had a, a new decoy set up for this evening, and we've tried different weather, but that's just part of hunting coyotes. It's difficult hunting, and that's what kind of makes it fun, so. Trapping is a long time tradition here in Kentucky. I actually know people who paid their way through college by setting trap lines back in the day. Now, remember to contact your local CO and have the proper equipment, and you have a lot of fun out there.